Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Modicky and I'm a Beverly Hills board certified plastic surgeon. And today we're going to talk about Christy Brinkley. And the reason we're going to talk about her is she's nearing 70. She's 67 years old and she looks amazing. So the real question is how does somebody like that maintain their youthfulness and beauty and unlike some other famous actresses and supermodel, avoid looking done, plasticky, over poofed or just having too much surgery. I wanted to go through that and talk about what, is she, what do I think she's done, what do I think she's not done to maintain this youthful, beautiful look into her mid to late 60s. So one thing that worked in Christy's favor is that she started out beautiful, right? She started out with amazing features. She has good proportions, she has good facial symmetry, she has those nice high cheekbones, nice structure to her brows and eyes, that cute nose, and a really strong jawline. So as long as she just maintains that, then she's gonna maintain her beauty and youthfulness fairly easily. So I think she's done a good job of that and I don't think she's screwed it up. So let's talk a little bit about how has she done that? How has she maintained this all the way into her mid 60s? And there's a, a, a saying that's uh, in the plastic surgery world and other places that says, you know, as we age, the quote, the dew comes off the rose. And what that means is even over time, no matter what we do, we'll lose a little bit of that glow, a little bit of that vibrance, a little bit of that shine or the quote, dew on the rose. And I think in cases like Christy, what we want to do is just re replace that dew on the rose. You just want to make the skin more vibrant, replace that glow. You don't have to go and replace the entire flower. You just have to go and add back some things, maintain some things, add back a little bit of volume, a little bit of glow to the skin. And over time, that will maintain the youthfulness, maintain her beauty. I think Christy has done just that, but how has she done that? Right. Besides the fact that things we talk about, which is, you know, access to great styling and great hair and makeup and all those things, what else has she done? And she's admitted to some things. So those little tweaks, those little things that add back, maintain, prevent are things like old therapy, radio frequency treatments. Those treatments are aimed at strengthening the skin, rebuilding skin elastin, a collagen, thickening the skin, tightening the skin. So those sort of treatments over time can add up. And if she's been doing it for many years, it'll help maintain that youthful appearance of the neck and the skin. And then secondly, there's other things like access to good facials and good skin care, and maybe Botox and a touch of fillers, things like that again, just to maintain things over the years. Now, <laughs> having said that, I still always say, as we all get into our 50s or 60s, we're gonna start to show signs of aging almost no matter what we do. There'll probably be some sagging in the neck or a little bit of laxity in the jowl. And when we're not seeing that in the face, then it becomes very suspicious that something was done at some point or another. And I do think probably at some point in her life, Christy did have a facelift. Uh, she probably went in and have it very conservatively done. She went and tightened up the jawline, maybe a little bit of looseness like I said, along the jawline and the neck, and she probably had it done very conservatively. Now what I call that is setting the stage. So once she's done that, all she has to do is maintain that afterwards. Again, going back to these treatments, old therapy, radio frequency, skin tightening, microneedling, maintaining that look. Once she's achieved that setting the stage look, we just keep on tweaking it along the way without overdoing it. And I think she's done a good job with that kind of approach to her face and maintaining her youthfulness and her beauty. Again, one thing that I do want to talk about, Christy, I don't want to necessarily overemphasize it, but I do want to talk about it, is that I think she's done a good job of not over poofing her face or overdoing things. Now, as we age, we all know we lose volume in the face. So we can see in Christy's case, she's maintained that volume in her cheeks and her mid face, and even her lips have remained plump or even plumper than when she was little. So again, I think she's either done fillers or fat grafting or something to maintain that volume in the face. Otherwise it would have slowly shrunk and lost volume in her face. Now in her case, I think she's done it very well. We can tell it's fuller, but not over full like some of the celebrities do where they over plump things. And I think one reason they do that is they're overcompensating. They're trying to take up the laxity or loosen of the skin by overfilling things. Again, we don't want to do that. We want to tighten, fill a little, tighten, fill a little. And I think that's what she's done. And I think she's done it very well. One other thing Christy's done very well is she's done all the other things right to maintain her beauty and her youthfulness. And that is taking care of her body and her health. So she's well known to do exercise, eat a healthy diet, all these things that add up to taking care of the body 
will take care of the face and take care of your youthfulness. So I think she's a good role model of how you can combine these minor little tweaks along with taking care of yourself to maintain your beauty over many, many years. If she continues to do this and doesn't overdo it and, and stays right on this track, I think she's gonna age very gracefully and she's gonna continue to maintain her beautiful appearance and youthfulness long into the future. Uh, so I think it's interesting because you talked about setting the stage and I don't know if your viewers have the same tendency to believe what I believe, but sometimes I think that surgery is like really the answer and like the non-invasive initiatives, so to speak, are just kind of like sub smaller substitutes for these major procedures. But it sounds like that's not always the case with people like Christy because it seems like you think she has done a lot of non-invasive in a small amount of truly surgical. Well, the non-invasive things do a couple of things for you. Um, number one, they're gonna hopefully make you need less aggressive surgery. You know, again, if you wait till things get really bad and do the surgery, much more noticeable, right? Things are already starting to sag and now it's gonna be a much more aggressive surgery. And then secondly, it's making these type of treatments make the skin healthier. They make them do better with surgery, heal faster. You know, the skin is more robust and thicker. And then once you've set that stage and where you're at, you know, maybe that little tweak, again, to maintain that, it does very well. So there's that pre-treatment, making the skin healthier for the surgery. Uh, more robust blood flow, thickness, collagen, elastin, and then after the surgery, maintaining it. So I do think that there is a place for it. Will it replace the facelift? Not yet. Maybe in the future we'll have a machine that's good enough. But right now it does help um, prepare and also, uh, you know, make the results better and also longevity of the results. Christy is what, in her 60s? 67, yeah. Okay, so um, we know that the, Almost 70. The nose and ears continue to grow over time. It doesn't seem like her nose has grown substantially. So right. does that mean she's had a rhinoplasty or does that mean just some people's noses don't grow as much as others? The, she's very fortunate, right? She started out with a really cute little button nose. So even if it got a little bit bigger, it's not going to get enormous. But people starting out with a slightly bulbous nose or big tip cartilages, they may tend to grow a little bit more or the, the ligaments may become a little more lax and allow it to drop or spread out. But since she's starting out with a smaller nose, it probably won't be you know, as noticeable that it got a little bit bigger. Earlobes, I can't see because she was always wearing her hair down. But, yeah. <laughs> Which again, you know, in her, that's another way to hide everything, right? She, she even, I think, talked about it, the, how her smile will light up the room, right? The way we hide some things we did, wear the hair down, smile all the time. So she knows how to do that if she did do something how to hide it, you know, or, or the signs of it.